everybody. I'm Christy Welch. I lead the Direct Food and Agricultural Marketing Program for OSU Extension, and I am thrilled to be here today with... Good morning, everyone. I'm Jamie Haji. I'm with the Ohio Farmers Market Network, and uh, we are a statewide 501c3, and we support and educate farmers market managers, vendors, stakeholders, the community on direct-to-consumer marketplace issues. So networking, training, uh, we're excited to be here and share what we have learned over time. And I do encourage you, as you have questions, just feel free to jump in. Um, we're going to do some activities, so you're not going to be sitting all morning, um, but we are here to share information about a project that OSU, OFMN, and the Farmers Market Coalition, which is a national organization that supports and advocates for farmers markets across the country, um, and it was on data collection and use, and so that's what we are going to talk about here this morning. It was funded by SARE, which we greatly appreciate. It was their professional development program funding that we received and were able then to do this work. And so what we're going to talk about again is what is the goal of data collection and use? And um, here are some things that we will talk about as we go through. The other thing that I hope you get out of uh, this session is how you could collect data at either your farm or your farmer's market. I would like to know how many farmer's market vendors do we have in the room by show of hands? Fantastic. And do we have any managers, farmer's market managers? Pretty good selection there. Great. So what we're going to try to do is talk to both audiences on data collection and use as we go through this. I would just add that oftentimes we start talking about data and people glaze over a bit, right? You're like, I don't, I don't have time for data. Data can be super simple. And our hope and our goal here is to show you just how simple that can be. So don't, don't glaze over yet. We're just a few seconds in. So we do have a lot of times markets ask their vendors for information like, how much did you sell today? Or how much did you sell this season? And we know that's a sensitive topic. But we do want to emphasize that it is important to collect some data so that you can tell the story of the market and the impact that it is having on the local community, on the farmers and food vendors, on the social networking that happens at markets. And so some of the things that we typically ask about are how many SNAP sales did you have? Now, if you accept SNAP at your market, you're required to keep that kind of information to report back. Um, but then you can use that to seek funding for the market. Because as you know, markets are, have very limited resources usually. Um, and so that's a way to generate some revenue. Again, to generate that community support for the market. It's amazing to me, Jamie, that we have communities that love their farmer's market and don't ever want it to leave. And we've had instances where some of the businesses in the area are like, I don't want that farmer's market here. They're taking sales away from my business, which is not the case based on research. Um, but being able to have some of that information can really help tell the story of the market and how good they are for communities. And um, it really goes back to telling that story. And I'll add, as you see up here, we're talking, we're, we're mentioning the market, right? And so for the vendors here in the room, you're going, well, okay, great. So I'm not seeking sponsors for my farm, right? But you might be filling out one of these farmer SARE grants. And certainly they're going to be asking you questions about what do you grow? How many acres? How many products? Fill in the blank. How many varieties of carrots did you grow this year? And I'm being a bit facetious, but you get the point. There are lots of ways a vendor would be using this information as well. Um, the community support. You might be a farmer who's dabbling in the idea of CSA. Would your customers, would your community support a CSA? Where would your CSA customers likely come to pick up their goods? So there are ways that you can, again, use the same data, the same kinds of data to get support for your farm. Um, monitoring the health. So the marketing and grow, you know, uh, 
Did your customers find you on Facebook? That would be a great question. Even if you're just asking it anecdotally at the farmer's market, how did you hear about my farm? It doesn't have to be pen and paper. It doesn't have to be electronic. It can just be a conversation. Um, and telling a story is really important. And I bring up the, you know, the carrots again. I grew 13 varieties of carrots. And telling that story to a customer is can be really impactful because they understand you can tell them what why 13 varieties of carrots. Um, it shows your passion for carrots. You can talk about the different colors and the um, how challenging some varieties are versus others, the seasonality. This is a spring carrot and this is a fall carrot. So, you know, all of these ways that you can share your story, but it's through data. Thanks, Jamie. And that raises a really good point too. Unless you are in agriculture, you don't understand agriculture. And so I challenge those of us that are to be able to have those conversations with those people, whether they're customers or just whoever, um, to help them understand what agriculture is. So here's one way you can collect data. So we're gonna let you practice for your OFA evaluation. If you take out your smartphone and just scan that QR code, if you have a smartphone, and if you don't, that's fine. We're not really going to do anything with this data we're collecting. This is just to show you one aspect of how data can be collected. And we are curious, again, to know a little bit more about you. So I think there's three, maybe four questions there. I'll give you a minute to do that. I think folks have made progress with that. Again, this is one example of how you can collect data. You could have a QR code at your vendor booth. If you're trying to decide what other variety of carrot should I grow <laughs> or what other type of product should I grow, if you had that QR code, you could have your customers just scan it and answer a couple of questions, one or two, with a click of a button. And that can really help you plan for the growth of your farm. Well, while well, I was talking about my carrot example, um, another way in which, you know, data is, I think as vendors, we have all heard at least one time, your product is too expensive. I can buy this cheaper at. One of the data points you could collect while you're grocery shopping yourself is, that's interesting because at Kroger, they were actually $2.59 and I'm only charging $2. And at Whole Foods, they were $3.79. Again, I'm charging. So you can you can tell stories. This doesn't have to be, um, again, I, we're trying to level down this idea that data is this really laborious, intense process that you have to go through to collect and then communicate. Great point. Back when we were growing blackberries, um, we saw, yes, sir. Okay, that sounds, what you said sounds good. But what happens at your farmer's market, everybody's selling them same carrots for $5. So that's a great question. The question was, if everyone at the market is selling those same carrots for $5 and you're at $2, right? I'm at $5. Kroger's at $2.75 Okay. And, we're not and you're at $5. Yeah. yeah. And then you can't make the case that you're in fact cheaper. And in that case, I would say, yeah, ours are a little bit more expensive. And here's why. I'm a certified organic farm. I pay my laborers $15 an hour. I have insurance. I have, I have, I would list all of the reasons why those things are a little bit more expensive. I would also talk about the fact that my carrots are more nutrient dense than the things that you bought at the grocery store because these carrots came out of the ground 48 hours ago. I washed them myself, I packed them myself, and here I am selling them to you. I would talk about all of those things. And 
most of the time you're probably preaching to the choir, right? Somebody's here at the farmer's market. They're already, they're already slightly skewed in your direction because they're here. Um, and so that can be challenging, but I think data is a way in this scenario where you can acknowledge the facts and it's not that you don't know, but it's that you have a story to tell about why. Very good point. Was there another question? Is that try to try to talk to the farmer that grew it at the store. So the comment was again to try to talk to the farmer that that grew that carrot that's in the grocery store. They'll just think you're being condescending. But you're saying it in a nice way. No, you can say I don't it in a nice way. So it's to find out a way to tell a person that you're working as hard as you can and that my price is a little bit higher because I'm trying to make a living. I'm not selling, I'm not selling uh, these carrots at $2 because they came from California. Right. These are local. Well, again, I think it comes back to having that data as a vendor. How much did it cost you to produce that carrot? And until you know that, you won't know if you're going to be profitable over the long term. And the other thing, again, it goes back to educating your customers. Usually by local produce, especially, there's less waste. You're going to eat all those carrots where the ones that you get at the box store, you might throw half of them away. The other thing that I will say, um, back when we were growing blackberries and selling them by the quart, when you buy berries in a box store, grocery store, how are they priced? By the ounce, right? And so I just took a little card based on what the grocery store was selling them per ounce versus what we were selling them per ounce. Our per ounce price was slightly higher. But people have been trained by the way they price products in a grocery store. So try to communicate that. They don't understand bushels and pecks and quarts and all that stuff. So just another opportunity. <coughs> nope. oh. I'm thinking about this from the manager side um, because we do a lot of advocacy for our vendors. Um, and with our newsletter and social media, sometimes that very question you're asking is something that the manager, if you know, if they have the time and resources, can help. Can also help do that education to the customers. Can, we're we're doing that now. We're trying to um, do a whole food access campaign, and we're doing a um, side by side comparison of everything, all the stuff we sell. What does it cost at Kroger? And we're really trying to figure out: is it actually more expensive to shop at our market or not? And so we, you know, you can have resources. You don't, you're not alone in that. Like you can maybe go to your manager, or the people who run the market to help with that kind of education too. Great. Sean? So you, you asked about price. I think, I mean, we've all been in a situation where people, the farmer's market are going to, if you're focused on price, then you, you're, you're going to be possibly at a disadvantage if you're going to focus that conversation in that area. Um, but people make decisions based on not just price, but values too, right? I mean, everybody's running around here paying $6 for a cup of coffee because it's convenient and people value convenience. Um, so I think that one of the more persuasive strategies you can use is appeal to a person's values. And a, and a, and a data gathering strategy can be useful if you understand the values between why people are coming to the market, you value community, you value quality, you value health for your family, you value taking care of the farm workers in your area. And if you know that and why those people are showing up at this market, you're, you've all of a sudden shifted that argument away from, you know, a dollar fifty dispute into much more important territory. And for some people, you're always going to lose that argument. Um, but like you said earlier, the people that show up at the farmer's market have a different set of values that um, that you're a winner in in that in that debate. So if you shift that debate away from that cost and say, yeah, we we it's more because, you know, we're paying a living wage, you know, and that's that's an argument that appeals to a lot of people these days. And that's a great point. And this is a little bit of an aside because we could do a whole pricing session too. And one of my things is I, the farmers that I work with and the food businesses I work with, I want you to make tons of money because I want our food to come from here. 
I don't want it to come from other places. And so we have a big challenge of educating our country on the value of local food, especially. So back to data. Um, again, it can be challenging due to limited time, whether you're a farmer, food producer, or a market manager, nobody has enough time, right? We don't have enough volunteers or staff. And then we collect this data and like, well, what would I do with this now? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And it really comes back to the messaging and telling that story that you can tell about your market and your vendors. And so here a lot of managers don't realize on your vendor application, there's a ton of data, right? How far is their farm away from your market? Are they sort of certified organic? Um, are they a multi-generational farm? Or are they new farmers? There's a lot of new farmers, as I'm sure you guys are aware. How many jobs do they create or retain in your community? I will tell you, if you're talking to like economic development folks and policymakers, that's what they want to hear, right, about the jobs. And then how many types or numbers of products are represented by that farm or that market? Regarding the conversation that is flavor and a, a good argument, is there evidence that we have better flavor in our products. A great question about talking about the flavor. I I find that to be the most difficult one because it's so it, it, it's such a matter of taste and flavor to each person, if you will. Um, so I find that one to be a little bit harder to execute in a good conversation. Um, what I wanted to add here on the examples uh, from a vendor perspective is thinking about um, Going back to thinking about things you're already doing, how many different varieties of seeds did you order this year? How many row feet of my famous carrots did you plant? How many tractors do you utilize on your farm? Um, how many months of the year do you grow product and harvest product versus taking time off? Um, I think for uh, my own farm, people don't realize we're a year-round operation. Well, you, you live in Ohio. What do you mean you're a year-round operation? Well, it's easy, let me tell you. So telling people those kinds of stories. So these are not just um, you know, distance to farmer's markets. For you, that might be how far do you travel? My furthest market is 200 miles away. My closest market is 20 miles away. Those are stories you can tell with that data as a vendor. And I do have to just mention the taste thing because I'm a strawberry grower now. That's all we grow. There is nothing better than a local ripe strawberry, right? So, of course, we take credit for that <laughs> tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. But local picked ripe does make a big difference in my opinion. And so here's another example of a way you can collect data, whether you are a farm vendor or a farmer's market manager. Take a box, and I meant to make one. I apologize I didn't have time to do it. Just take a box, put it on your table or at your market tent or wherever it might be, and ask the shopper one question. So down here's my example. Would you want heirloom tomatoes? Would you want hot peppers? Or would you want eggplant? Things that I'm not currently growing. And then I would have some fun with what you use. So maybe for the tomatoes, you use a a dry kidney bean, and maybe for the hot peppers, you use a kernel of corn, and maybe for the eggplant, you use something else. So all they do, if they want you to do eggplant, they pick up whatever that bean or seed is and drop it in the box. Simple as that. When you get home, had a chance to recover from market, you dump out the box and you see what kind of seeds are most in there. You could use different colors of paper. You could use whatever. Make it fun. I think the seed route just encourages people to participate. Yes, we'll be happy to share the slides and will you guys share them out or do we need to do that? Okay, let's do this. My email is at the end. Feel free to email me and I'm happy to send them to you. Nope, that's fine. And so here's other examples of how you can collect data. So this is called a dot survey also known in a more formal term as the rapid market assessment. 
rapid being that it takes you two seconds to stick this sticker on. Uh, we have done this many times at farmer's markets that I have managed, and these are just a few examples. It can be using a map where you don't care about the specificity, but you can see where groups of people are coming from. Uh, you can use, um, you know, we had a little bit of fun with this one. Uh, the years you have lived on this beautiful earth, uh, we didn't ask you how old you are, but we did. Um, so, you know, one of the things, uh, do you visit other stores in the mall at the indoor farmer's market? So this was, um, you know, point of contention. Oh, this farmer's market, really? Okay, let me tell you, because they're not coming for the mall. They're coming for the farmer's market and they're shopping while they're here. So you can make cases like this um, and you could do this this kind of a version at your market stand. So you might, in the previous example, you might have, I have extra acreage, acreage and I want to grow a new product. Is it heirloom tomatoes, hot peppers, or eggplant? So we've got an example. You can see it right here. We have, we're going to have you, oh, sorry. We're going to have you get up and just do a dot survey real quickly so you can see how easy it is. We have a question here, question on the back wall, and one here. So if you just take a dot, color does not matter, and place it according to your answer to those three questions. So we'll take a few minutes for that. Have plenty. Yeah. If you have kids that, and you're doing this at a farmer's market, the kids love to have the dog. This is a dog where mom and dad come. Hey, Graham. Hey. Good to see you. Pass that that way. I don't know if they need more back there or not. All right, how are you? Pretty good. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. How you been? Wow, I'm pretty good. I'm keeping busy. Still, still over by Marion? Yeah, yeah. 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 Still there all. <laughs> <laughs> so while you guys are getting ready to finish that up, I appreciate your participation. I always think it's good to get up and move around first thing in the morning too. So we're happy to be able to help you do that. I will just say on the DOT surveys, you do need to be thoughtful about the questions that you are asking. And again, you can do a DOT survey either with your customers if you're a vendor at a market or with the farmer's market customers in general, like the examples here that Jamie talked about. 
but you also don't want to wear your customers out and ask them a question every time they come to see you. But to be thoughtful about the questions and figure out what is it that you really need to know from your audience that will help you reach your next goal, whether that's for your farm individually or whether that's for your farmer's market. Dot survey, yes. So there are lots of resources out there about ways to conduct a dot survey, best practices. Um, as Christy was saying, you don't want to do this every single week at your market or at your farmer's market booth. You will wear your customers out. They will tune out. And this is important information. Um, you also want to be very deliberate and very specific in your question. So asking what kind of product you might grow with your additional acreage, if you have zero intention of growing heirloom tomatoes, but lots of people have said it, that's irrelevant. You have no intention of growing them. As a farmer's market, um, we see people who ask the question, should, we, should the market be moved from Thursday to Saturday, yes or no? What is the point in that question if you have no intention or resource to make that change possible? So you want to think about the question, how you ask it, what the responses are. Are you providing a realistic response to the question? So think very poignantly about what those questions are. And you also don't want to ask too many questions at one time, right? So a vendor, your business for the day is selling your your, your wares. Um, you don't want to have three questions. For a farmer's market, we recommend three, four questions, right? You saw that we did that fun one. We had six questions that day, which was a little much. That's a little overwhelming. Um, but we were having fun with it and, you know, there was a purpose to it. But most of the time, we would recommend three or four questions. You want it to be super quick. This shouldn't feel like your customers have to stop and spend 15 minutes of their precious day answering these questions. They should be go boom, 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 done. So again, as Jamie mentioned, there's lots of resources out there for DOT surveys too. Um, and so uh, if you need additional resources, you can contact either one of us. Um, here's some examples that I wanted to get into now of how we use data that we collect, whether we're a farmer or a farmer's market. The one thing I would say as a farmer, when you ask your customers their opinion, they love it. It builds that relationship. And so don't ever be afraid to ask your customers those questions. But in this particular example, you can see that, now I know we talked about sales. This market had 1.6 million over the course of the year. Why would a market manager ask you as a vendor for sales data? Market share for grants. Marketing the market effective. to determine whether they're marketing the marketing effect effective or not. So that's all great information. So again, we try to be very sensitive about asking for sales data from vendors. We know that that's something that people don't like to share and that's fine. There's other ways that you can tell the story of your market. Maybe instead of you have gross sales, maybe it's jobs created or retained. Maybe it is food insecurity numbers about SNAP and, and MATCH and all those kinds of things. And I want to touch a little bit. Oh, yeah, Amanda. Um, so, I think, I, I don't know, from a marketing perspective, but a common um, response that I've heard is that the request for market sales is the concern, which I understand because it, it saw them have done this. Um, where, well, are you taking those market, those market sales to then increase by rent or yeah. by food, right? Like I think, oh, we're doing well. Okay. That means you want to charge me more. Like that right. kind of, I think, and sometimes that doesn't happen because there's like that trust between the market manager and the, and the vendors. 
but sometimes that's just an honest concern. Um, I think man, uh, I don't know if we have time to like mention opportunities to like use that data and like have it front facing for vendors and giving them comfort that that's not what is being collected. Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, or, or comment was about the sensitivity of this data and the concerns that vendors will often raise. Why are you collecting this data? Who wants to know? Uh, is this, is it an anonymous? Is it not? Are you using this because you want to raise my rents? Are you, so I think to answer um, to Amanda's point, I would say, so the opportunity there is we need to explain why we're asking for this data. It's not, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's not okay. You can do whatever you want, but to just say, hey, I need your sales data is really off-putting, right? No one wants to just willy-nilly hand over their income for what purpose you gave me none. Rather, if you said, we'd like to spend this market season collecting sales data from our vendors so that we know, did we increase sales over last year or have we decreased? Did we stay the same? You say, well, you didn't collect sales data last year. Right. So this year is just about establishing a baseline. That's what we want to do this year. And here's how we're going to do it. And this data will be only seen by us. Um, it will be anonymous. It will be, um, so I, everybody wants sales data. That's the first thing everybody else, everybody always asks for. What's sales data? Well, that's, we, we'd love to share that with you, but none of us have that um, because this is an incredibly sensitive topic. So how could you ask that question in a different way? You might ask your vendors, if you're a market manager, you might say, were your sales, did your sales meet or exceed expectations or fail expectations? You might say, you might ask, were your sales in 2023 greater than, equal to, or less than 2022? There are ways of asking that question without getting a dollar figure. And that might be a first step to getting the information that you're seeking um, for a this is a, a slightly probably vendors aren't going to be out in the in the wild going, yeah, I made 1.6 last year. Look at me, right? That's not necessarily a sales a, a data point that vendors are likely to do. Um, but what you would do is you would say, I sold 1,875 bunches of carrots last year, right? They can do the math on that. Um, so you would ask that in different ways. The other way to collect sales data, for example, would be anonymously. I always collected it anonymously. You got a slip of paper that literally had a dollar sign and a line on it, and I collected them in a brown paper bag at the end of market. I walked around, everyone dropped them in. I had no idea whose sales, but I had good data. So there are ways of asking a sensitive uh, topic like that to people who don't necessarily want to give the information. And then I shared with them, I want this because I want to know if our market's doing well. So this is another example of an infographic, a little bit more simplistic. I will say that, you know, that first one can feel a little overwhelming, right? You're like, wow, there were 18 data points on that. I'm not going to collect that information. Great. Just collect one. You don't have to collect that much information. Just collect one and make it a strong question. Make it something that can be impactful. Uh, make it something that tells multiple stories. So uh, this is about the average distance. So this is a story about the distance of your food to the market. This is a story about how many total miles your vendors travel to get to your market. This is a story about the farmer who travels 200 miles and 15 miles. So you're telling this in a number of different ways, but with one piece of data. Yes. Is there a carbon impact equation that you use there to like, your assumption that 
That's a good question. Is there a is there an impact? Um, there is. I'm sure some people go to that level. I would say probably most of the people in the room don't have those. When we get back to some of the challenges, the resources, the time to calculate that, the time to navigate what that means, and that's okay. But if you do, right? You started in year one and you just collected the data, and maybe you didn't do anything with it. That's okay. You took the first step in collecting data. And the second step, you told the story of uh, how 18 of your farmer's market vendors lived within a 20-mile radius. And then the third year, you started to get into what does that mean for our carbon footprint? So there are ways to take the same piece and utilize it over and over and over again um, to enhance your story. And of course, things are relative. I live in rural Southern Ohio right? We could have a market that most of our vendors come with from 11 miles. Downtown Columbus, that's going to be a little bit more difficult, right? Um, but again, I think you're telling the story to your customers and it speaks to their values lots of times, as Sean mentioned early on. So here's again, just some other examples. Um, number of employees, 14. Um, Two businesses are supported by markets over the course of the year, um, 360 acres of diversified farmland. I love this one. I don't know about you guys, but I see all the stuff going on on farm ground and I just cringe every time. Um, wouldn't that be a great uh, number to tell your customers? And then here's another example. This is actually from the Finley Market for National Farmers Market Week. Um, they did these great big banners down at Finley Market again that helps tell the story. And it, again, helps to speak to people's values of valuing local foods. The second example is from as of part of our 2018 Farmers Market Promotion Program grant. Um, we conducted rapid market assessments at 26 markets in Columbus, asking the same three questions at all of the markets and encouraging the market manager to ask one additional question that they were particularly interested in. And then we created for them each this little um, uh, wrap card size that they could print, they could share with their community, they could share with their vendors. Very basic. But what we did, it allowed us to do was not only communicate a story about that particular market, but we were able to communicate, um, and not that this was about comparison, but comparatively speaking, how markets in the area were doing. Also, as a region, how did we do? Um, and these are hard to read because they're very little, but estimated sales um by vendors on this particular date. So that market was $17,244 in that three hour period. Um, then we also asked um, the uh, we asked the customer to self-report the amount of money that they spent at the market. That came out to seventeen dollars and eighty-five cents on average. And you know, a number. And this gets into the weeds of data collection. But based on asking these two questions, we knew that we were within about a five to ten percent margin of error um, of what the customer reported versus what the vendor reported at almost all of our markets. Some of them were spot on with like $50 difference. And you go, oh, well, that's pretty good, right? Because a vendor made some rough numbers and customers up or down a little bit. Um, we asked them how many adults were shopping in their group that day. Um, and then this was the total number of vendors selling at the market that day. Um, this was likely a market manager who didn't have a fourth question to ask. So we simply created one just on the number of people that showed up for the day. And then we also did for them, for the market, um, these were two examples from Bexley, just the same information in a different way. Um, super simple. We put percentages up here and it's all about the percent, right? It's, it catches your eye. It's got a beautiful picture in the background. 22% of customers would increase spending if more prepared foods were offered. That was our, our question at Bexley was, do you want more prepared foods, right? We'd been hearing it anecdotally, 
but that doesn't mean a lot. That might be the same person that talks to you every single week and sometimes twice in one market because they really want prepared foods. Or it might be that it is a repetitive theme of your customers. So that was a question we asked. Um, and then 57.8 uh, customers who spend between 15 and 20 minutes at the market. Uh, good to know. So you have to have a pretty quick, like, this is how much time they're spending. So that's great information to share um, for people who maybe like to talk a lot, right? Maybe, you, maybe you're maybe um, you a vendor who likes to tell stories to every customer you, you come in contact with. Okay, well, maybe you reconsider your storytelling and you find a shorter story. Uh, <laughs> maybe you, you know, see a, a customer who's been standing for a long time and your market manager walks over just to sort of, you know, help move things along. I mean, there are a number of different ways you can, you can utilize data um, of this kind. Oh, question. Yes. Yes. Is the question you asked, would you love more of your food at the market? I'm trying to and think of it. Oh, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean no. They would spend on it. Yeah. Um, I think the question was, would you purchase prepared foods if they were available? Um, I think that was how we asked it. Um, yeah, exactly. And that is, I mean, it's a great question because that is, if you just said, to your point, would you like to see prepared foods here? <laughs> doesn't mean you're going to buy them. That's absolutely right. So I'm pretty sure that's how we asked it. Is there another question? Okay. Christy, do you want to? Yep. yep. Great. So I think we've established why data collection is important. One of the other things that comes to my mind, just because um, my local farmer's market is in a parking lot of the county service center, so our commissioners allow us to be there. They've been very generous. They haven't been charging us to be there. It's been a great experience, but that's not always the case. And so if you have some of this information that you can take to your policymakers and your local um, powers that be in your location, um, that can really help drive the point home of how good the market is for that area. One of the biggest challenges I see is when a market has to move. That can be a very critical time for a farmer's market. And so, again, to generate support for a move to a good location that's good for the market as well um, is very important. Again, think about the questions that you're asking. We've shown you three different ways today to be able to ask those questions. The QR code, the dot survey, and the box example. Um, there are others. And so... One of the things that I do want to mention um, before we wrap up here, and um, part of the project that we did with the SARE grant, Jamie, if you'd pass those around, just give me one. And I, I printed 25, so I may not have enough. I'm happy to, again, to email. But this is a result of the uh, SARE project that we did. We talked to 15 direct marketing farmers throughout Ohio. And really what we were interested in is what kind of information would they like to be able to make better business decisions to grow their farm or food business? Now, I know 15 is a pretty small amount, but that's all we could do at this particular time. Um, but you have this to take with you. You can look through that. Um, and again, just another example of why data collection is important and how it can be used. And the other thing that I would like to say is we're here to help. The Ohio Farmers Market Network did 26 markets one season. They didn't do that. Jamie didn't do all that alone. The organization is awesome. I encourage you to re utilize those resources. OSU Extension can help. One of the things that I think kind of being an outside person is if you're going to try to collect sales data, if you don't have that trust relationship already with the manager of the market, maybe look to your local extension educator so that they're not at the market every week. They don't know who's dropping these numbers in the bag. That might be one way to approach that. And I want to thank Jamie 
I want to thank all you guys, and we have just a few minutes left for questions. So, Jamie, I'm going to turn the rest of the time over to you. Sounds good. And I am happy to, we'll take questions. And I, I want to, you know, point out the questions that we asked you, uh, because in just reading them, it's a simple question, right? What state did you live? What, what state do you live in? Well, that's easy. We want to know where you come from. Um, but we might also look at that and we say, huh, one person each from Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Indiana. So maybe we need to review where we're marketing in those states. Maybe we need to pick up marketing opportunities. Nobody came from Michigan. Is this, you know, is this a, a longstanding uh, football feud and no one is going to come here for that reason? So you, you start diving into um, these questions and then you go other states. Hmm. There were only two. Okay. Well, that's great. Let's just say for a moment, if you will entertain this, that rather than all of those dots being up there in Ohio, all of the dots were down there in other. And you'd go, oof, okay, I didn't ask the right question. I didn't provide the right answers. So, you know, none of these things are going to be perfect every time, the first time, the last time, you're going to learn. Um, you might find that something you asked isn't useful. That's okay. That happens sometimes too. It doesn't take away the fact that you did it, um, that your customers had fun doing it, that you got something out of it, right? We know that this many people live in Ohio. Um, what is the primary source of income? So again, simple question. We know that we don't know how much money you made, but we know predominantly where your money is coming from. So we could tell um, if we were a farmer's market, we would tell our customers that only 40% of our vendors are able to earn a living from their farmer's market work. 60% um, of our vendors have to have additional off-farm work to pay their bills. That's a powerful story, right? Um how else might we use that? We might use that and say, huh, so does that mean we have more hobbyists? Then do we want to maybe skew that? We want this to be the, we want this to be a market that has predominant farmer first income. So this is a, you know, this is a question that can go a lot of different ways. What is your primary purpose for being here? So who are we talking to, right? Simple. We're talking mostly to farmers. We've got a couple market managers. Um, somebody said, well, there's not, there's not, an, on, there's nothing on there for networking, just socializing. And sometimes, sometimes you do one of these and you have a little marker. So maybe next time you add a little marker where people can just write on there. Again, there are different ways of doing this. We have a one pager on dot surveys that we're happy to share. Um, I will say that uh, Oregon State is one that is sort of nationally known as a good resource for dot surveys as well. Um, and there was a question, I think, maybe question. Yes. Um, yeah, I guess I'm interested in this info. Um, maybe I need to just email one of you directly afterwards, but for information on like websites, cookies, tracking, how can I tell more about who my specific customers are in the different avenues of the business? Mm -hmm. So like who's following me online, not just social media, but like who's going to buy from me online um, versus like I go to a market in Columbus. I have to have different pricing because those people are from a completely different socioeconomic uh, standpoint. They value local foods different than in my community where there it is a very rural agricultural area where people just like hand vegetables away and they don't want to pay anything for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So the question was about resources and um Knowing where your customers are coming from, how to how to figure that information out. So there are on a lot of social sites at this point, you have the ability to look at some statistics. Um, that's very generic, right? And so you might find that you send out um, you have a QR code at your 
you know, print a one pager and you say, hey, I'm just trying to figure out how you found my farm and just have them do that one quick question. Um, to Christy's point, you could have a box there and just have them grab a bean for the different um, or a simple question of, would you buy my products online? Um, are you an in-person shopper only, right? You're, you're thinking about what are the options and the avenues that you wish to sell your product and what is it that you want to know? And that's, you know, so often it's not that the question is the first thing you're thinking of. It's the answer that you're looking to get um, and then phrasing the question appropriately. Other questions? Yes. I was saying the data collection, uh, the one market we go to for like 25 years, we happen to ask how much money everybody brought. And we sort of do that account. <laughs> and then uh, we went on a township property and about 15 years ago, we had to move. They sold the property. So then they sort of showed us other places that were way too tiny. But we had that figure that we're getting about a thousand people in three hours and how much money was coming in. Right. And that really opened our eyes up because nobody from the township ever comes to the market. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great point. You use the data that you had to make the case for a move, for a property, for the size, for the scope of what you needed as a market. Um, quick question, since we are mostly farmers slash vendors in here, how many of your markets collect data? So you're all sort of like, I didn't think they do. Yeah, kind of. How many of your markets share their data with you? <laughs> wow, market managers, we have some work to do. Um, yeah, exactly. So this is one of those areas where we're really, really trying to work with market managers. What is the point in collecting data if you just throw it into a desk drawer or it just sits in an Excel spreadsheet, right? What is the point? Why, why even waste your time or energy? Utilize it. And that right there is one of the, well, how am I going to, I don't have time to sort through all of this information. Just ask one question. Just pull that one question from your market application and utilize it. Um, and so for a, for a vendor, what I would say is, how can you go to your market manager and say, hey, I really think some data collection efforts would go a long way for us. And we as vendors would love to know X, Y, and Z. How can we help you accomplish that? Um, as a vendor, maybe you can be the cheerleader that we all need that says, hey, fellow vendors, this is important. And our market manager wants sales data, our municipality wants sales data, uh, this, this mall or this facility, they want to kick us out because they think we're impeding their sales. Let's work together to get this data into the hands of our market manager and make the suggestion, hey, market manager, I know you want sales data, but the way you're doing it is not, is not really effective. We don't want to share specific data information with you, but we are willing to share it anonymously, and we are willing to share it in reference to our predominant sales mechanism at market. So I'm willing to circle meat, dairy, fruits, vegetables, value added. I'm willing to circle the types of products I sell. And make a suggestion to your market manager. Sometimes your market manager just doesn't know you care. We don't know that you care about this. You have enough on your plate. We just assume you're just, you, you've got enough. You don't want to worry about this, but you do. Other questions? Yes. I have a question for the audience because as I was looking at your data, it looks like we have 62% of the people who are here said that they were farmers. Mm -hmm. 37% are making a living from farming. That's a, a huge disconnect. So I'm curious, how many people would like to make a living from farming? It's a great question. So the question is, how many people would like to make a living from farming? And this is relative to the data that we collected. We're comparing two different questions and the results of those. 
So what's your primary purpose? 62% said farmers, but only 37% of people said that it was, it was their primary source of income. So this is a great, now you have another data point that was irrespective of anything you asked in the room. You didn't ask anybody that question, but you have an answer. And we have 18 people who would like to have a primary source of income. Eleven people said they did. So that's this is for OFA. Yeah. For next year's marketing plan. <laughs> there you go. Next year's plan. Topic. OFA is gathering data. <laughs> Question. Is there an effective or fast way to assess the traffic at a farmer's market? Mm. What methods people use? use yes. Great question. Question is about um, the traffic counts. So the number of customers that shop your market. So there are a couple of very simple ways. Um, oftentimes at our bigger open air markets, it's a bit challenging, right? Because your customers can come from literally 360 degrees. At an indoor location, much easier, right? You've got two doors, you're in and out. So what we did was we had hand clickers and you count for 10 minute periods of time every customer who came in. Um, at an open air market, we did the same thing and we set up what we considered to be primary entry points, right? The main sidewalks into the market. Um, let's say you're a little teeny tiny market. So Bexley was very small. It was just me. I didn't have volunteers, but I could see the market. And so Every once an hour, I would walk through the market and I would count every customer going one direction, right? I walked to the end, snapped every customer, and then you multiply that out. That's an easy way to do a very, very small market. Um, there is new technology. Athens did a camera. Uh, they put it up from set up to tear down and they recorded the whole thing. You can do um, a, uh, a visual from up above. You can divide your market um, equally in squares and you count the number of people in squares and you multiply. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to do it, but it can be, it can be pretty simple. Um, for, a, for a vendor, you might just have a tally sheet right there. Every time you make a sale, you have somebody mark a tally. Um, you might... Count the number of bags. You're like, well, that, that would be harder if you're putting multiple, giving people multiple bags. But um, let's see, you might, yeah, you might give them a, how many postcards did I hand out? You can, you, there's a number of different ways that you can do it, but the clickers are the easiest or a little tally sheet if you were a vendor. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Question. Oh, yes. Sorry, I know we have uh, a couple more comments, but we are past time. So I want to be respectful of um, everybody's schedule and get you on. I'll be around today. I think Jamie will be around today. If there's anything you want to chat with us about, we're happy to do that. Thank you for being here. Here's our contact info and enjoy the rest of the conference.